Welcome to WaverWise, navigating New York's 1115 updates, your go-to micro-podcast for the latest insights and updates on New York State's 1115 waiver. In each short episode, we'll break down the complex world of healthcare waivers, providing you with concise and clear updates on how these changes impact healthcare in the Empire State. Whether you're a healthcare professional, policymaker, or just someone curious about the evolving landscape of healthcare in New York, join us as we navigate through the intricacies of the 1115 waiver updates, offering valuable perspectives and key takeaways in just a few minutes. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking a little bit today about the Continuous Eligibility Waiver Amendment, which is a fancy way of saying we're going to be talking about kids. We're going to be talking about kids on Medicaid. And this is one of my all-time favorite topics. As one of the founders of the first 1,000 Days on Medicaid Commission, I just love kids on Medicaid. Why? Because it gives kids early in life, a super, super solid start, which I think we owe all of our children. I'm Juliette Price. I'm our Chief Solutions Officer here at HSG. And I'm happy to be back for a, another quick podcast about another aspect of the 1115 waiver. For those of you who may have read some of our previous coverage, you'll know that this amendment was referred to in the documents that CMS provided back to New York State with its approval of the 1115 waiver. There was a small paragraph that talked about how CMS and New York State are in agreement about this program, but that New York State needed to submit a formal amendment to the waiver. So we are going to talk about what is in this amendment. It has been made public and it is published on the New York State Department of Health website. I know I kid a lot, but children on Medicaid is an issue that's near and dear to my heart. If you don't know, about one in two children are born with coverage on the Medicaid program. Medicaid covers one in one in two deliveries nationwide. And those numbers hold up here in New York State as well. As of late 2023, there are 2.3 million children on the Medicaid program and about another 430,000 on the CHIP program, which is the Child's Health and Insurance program. It's similar to Medicaid, but it covers up to 400% of the federal poverty line. So it's available for families who don't meet the means-tested ceiling that Medicaid has. And one of the reasons I care so deeply about this topic is that this is a moment, I should say, in children's lives where the convergence of the healthcare system, the education system, the early childhood system, and social development within their own family and community is really intertwined. And we know that 85% of brain development happens in those first three years. And so as we talk a little bit about what this waiver does, just keep in mind that those first few years are super important for kids and we want to make sure we get it right. Research has shown us that Medicaid coverage early in life is highly associated with fewer chronic conditions later on in adulthood things like high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, we see far fewer cases of those types of outcomes in healthcare related when a child actually accessed Medicaid coverage early in life. We also see much better outcomes when it comes to education, post-secondary education, um, access and completion rates are much higher, joblessness rates much lower. Ultimately, we see that the outcomes are better when we provide this early access to health insurance. And so we also know that the COVID-19 pandemic was particularly tough on kids and families. We know that about 4,200 children lost a parent or caregiver during the COVID pandemic. 325,000 children were pushed into poverty. As we know COVID came with its range of not just health-related impacts, but also economic impacts as well. So this is a moment, and this is the moment that both DOH and CMS are looking to capitalize on. This is a moment to reinvest in children and specifically children who are on the Medicaid program. We know that about 11% of children on Medicaid disenroll and re-enroll at some point during their their year on the program. And we colloquially refer to this as churn in the Medicaid program. So this is essentially saying, you know, kids have access at some point, but it either gets turned off, either their family member doesn't complete re-evaluation, 
or, or for some other reason, they lose access. And typically, we see this dawning on parents and caregivers at the point of care. And, and that's really unhelpful because, of course, that can act as a barrier to care. And we also know that when parents or families think that they don't have coverage, they are less likely to bring in their children for those important visits. And so what this continuous eligibility waiver amendment really says is that starting on September 1st, 2024, this strategy of continuous eligibility will be put in place for children under the age of six. Continuous eligibility essentially means as and the Medicaid program does re-enrollment and verifications on income, that process will still continue and families will still be reached out to. But whether they fail to complete that paperwork or perhaps they're not being contacted, you know, they've, they've moved, they've transitioned to another place, they, they missed that paperwork in the mail, or if the family actually is seeing economic mobility in terms of their household income. So they start to bump up a little bit past that federal poverty line limit that they would typically be exposed to. What this waiver is going to do is say, no worries, we're going to keep those young kids under six on the program. We're, we're waiving the need for them to have that, that eligibility check done. And so what this is going to do is it's going to keep kids covered for longer periods of time, whether or not they complete the paperwork, whether or not their family can prove that they are still eligible, we're going to make sure that kids stay covered. I think this is an important distinction to make is that any adults that are in that household, this eligibility waiver does not apply to them, right? So this is just kids under six. The two hypotheses that CMS and New York State are testing here is that essentially more individuals will stay enrolled in Medicaid. And so we'll be able to see that through just the Medicaid enrollment data. And the second hypothesis that they are testing is that essentially these children will have more comprehensive coverage. There should be reductions in the gaps in coverage over time for kids under six. And ideally, we'll also see some of those quality measures go up. So that's in a, in a nutshell what you need to know about the continuous eligibility waiver amendment. The last thing I'll tell you is New York State is certainly not the only state where this is happening currently. This is an implementation in Washington State, Oregon, New Mexico, and there's about eight or so other states that are either developing or in implementation stages. So this is certainly a national trend. Children on Medicaid tend to be very low cost, and yet we know this is the best form of prevention that there is. So with that, you know everything there is to know about the Continuous Eligibility Waiver Amendment. Stay tuned for other updates.